Kelsey Brennan Wessels, and welcome to this special edition of Earth from Space. The Atmosphere Monitoring Sentinel 5P satellite is set for launch on October 13th. Earlier this month, the satellite arrived in Plitsk in northern Russia to be prepared for liftoff. It has since been unpacked and switched on to ensure that everything is in working order. Earlier this summer, my colleague Mali got a chance to speak with the Sentinel-5P project manager and the Sentinel-5P mission manager in the clean room in the UK. Now, as the name describes, the clean room needs to be free of airborne particles, so all hair, including facial hair, needs to be covered. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Mali Chachere for ESA Web TV. Today, we are at Airbus Defence and Space in Stevenage, UK, and we are in the clean room. Just behind us is the Sentinel-5 precursor satellite, also known as Sentinel-5P. And with me are ESA's project manager, Kevin McMullen, and ESA's mission manager, Klaus Zenner. Let me start with a question for you, Kevin. So, what is the main task of a project manager for a satellite mission at ESA? Well, for S5P, the project manager is fully responsible for the overall design and the development of the uh, satellite, basic ground segment, launcher procurement, and the commissioning phase. Okay, and what sets the Sentinel-5P mission apart from other Earth-observing satellites? Well, within Copernicus, it's the first of the uh, atmospheric chemistry missions. It's a low-cost single satellite mission, and its main purpose is as a gap filler to continue the data products from Skiamaki and OMI uh, until we have the new sensors like Sentinel-5 on UMETSAT's MetOp second generation. Okay, and what have been the most rewarding aspects of developing this mission? Well, because the Tropomi payload is a joint uh, venture between ESA and the Netherlands, Netherlands Space Office, uh, we set up a joint project team in STEC to manage the program, and I think this gave everybody full visibility of all aspects of the program from both sides. Okay. And what have been the main challenges in ensuring that Sentinel-5P will deliver exactly what Copernicus users want? Well, as part of the digital agreement between ESA and the Netherlands, we were required to set up a mission advisory group. And this involved uh, scientists from uh, Dutch institutes and other scientists from Europe and the US. This is what we did. Now, in addition, we have uh, expert user groups, such as the Level 2 Working Group, and their job is to devise sophisticated algorithms uh, to generate the data we need. And then finally, we have CalVal teams, whose job it is to assess the data and ensure its accuracy and integrity. Okay, thank you. And Klaus, could you please tell us just when and how does the mission manager step in? Okay, the mission manager steps in after the uh, commissioning phase. Commissioning phase, as Kevin has mentioned, is still organized uh, by him and his team. But uh, after commissioning phase, we will, uh, we will start the so-called ramp-up phase to make things uh, more operational. So the commissioning phase has a duration of uh, six months and the ramp-up phase uh, about eight months. And during the ramp-up phase, we will provide uh, the data to the public. We will start to provide level one data uh, after s several months after launch. First level two data, uh, 10 months after launch. This will be trace gases that you can retrieve from the wavelength range that is, was also covered by the OMI instrument, precursor of uh, TROP OMI. So there's a lot of heritage. So we are confident that these data uh, go out uh, first with high quality. And then after 40 months, we will provide all the uh, products to the public, including also the data like carbon monoxide and methane that can be retrieved from the sphere band, the infrared band. So what sort of data will Sentinel-5P deliver and just who will be the users? So Sentinel-5P, as Kevin has mentioned before, will be the first atmospheric uh, Sentinel mission and it will provide information about uh, air quality, uh, especially over Europe, but also on global scale. And air quality has a negative impact uh, on our health, but also on the environment. And studies have shown uh, that in Europe, there are about 400,000 premature deaths based on uh, uh, exposure of people to air uh, pollution. And what are you most looking forward to with this mission? Okay, the most thing I'm looking forward is really to work together uh, with uh, the people who are already eagerly waiting for these new data sets because Sentinel-5B will provide uh, global coverage within one day with a very good spatial uh, resolution, uh, seven times 3.5 kilometers. 
By using this, you can enhance already developed applications based on Gomez, Kiyamaki, and Omi to enhance the information content of uh, this information. And also what Kevin, he worked together with uh, Dutch partners, and I'm looking forward to extend this. And here especially because the Dutch partners, they, uh, they used the expertise they had on OMI. They included this also in TROP OMI. And what we have seen by creating long-term data sets, for example, Total Ozone, that we have seen that OMI is stable. So if you do a time series, uh, you need stable instruments in order to get good data that can be used for climate monitoring. There are much more things to say here, but I think I stop because otherwise I would take for half an hour. Thank you so much. Klaus Zenner and Kevin McMullen, and from the Clean Room at Airbus Defense and Space in Stevenage, UK, for ESA Web TV, I'm Mali Chachere, wishing you all a very pleasant day.